Welcome to the Condo Insider Show. I'm your host on Think Tech Hawaii today, Cheryl Franklin. And today I will be joined by Mono Wen, a very good friend of mine, a uh, owner of NK Management and entrepreneur. And we're going to be talking about the age of COVID-19 as it relates to uh, being innovative and how it affects condo land. So why don't we start with um, you, Mano, and welcome, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Cheryl. How's everybody doing? Good, good, good. So let's just take a moment and just have you introduce yourself and tell the audience a little about you. I know a lot about you, so we'll just share <laughs> with the audience. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur, uh, Cheryl. Um, I, I would say my story dates all the way back to Texas. I was a refugee and I came to America in 1975, joined the military at 21. The military brought me to Hawaii, um, <clears throat> got into condo management, got some really, really good mentors at um, Touchstone. And Cheryl knows all these people too. I started my career at Touchstone and then I went to Hawaii first under a uh, uh, Richard Emery, and then a vice president of SOCIA before I started my own firm uh, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, we know a lot of the same folks, and I had the pleasure of working with you for a little while and um, venturing down the entrepreneurial lane, if you will. And as the owner of NK Management, NK Management is a site management company, correct? We, we did start off as a condo site management company and, you know, in condo land in Hawaii, there's, there's resident managers, there's general managers and site managers, all pretty much doing the same thing, but they just have a different, uh, you know, uh, relationship with the board, right? Resident managers live on site, site managers um, just come nine to five. They don't live on site. <clears throat> and, mm -hmm. um, and then the general managers, they're, they're the ones that, are at the larger hotels with the large staff, but they don't necessarily live on site either. But we all mm -hmm. pretty much serve the same purpose for the boards. Yeah. But then we've um, we've diversified since then, doing you know um, landscaping, and uh, we're we're general. Uh, we just got our general contractor's license with the DCCA. Uh, oh, that's pending. exciting! I didn't know that. We uh, we just you know during the COVID, we we <laughs> I have an RME. He, was, he took the exam and. Everything is just backlogged right now, but um, but yeah, we're doing some minor renovations as well. But we've evolved since for in the last five years. Yeah, as it relates to site management and uh, you're venturing into other aspects of that, have you had to change your operational infrastructure much in lieu of COVID nineteen and that's know, such a new, new that's normal? such a that's a loaded question. Um, I think that. Depending on uh, all the challenges that you have, I think your operations always gets tweaked to some degree. And, you know, sure, we've known each other for a long time. I'm a big fan of tech. And Absolutely, if, yeah. if, if, a, if an app can make our jobs easier to save time, um, time and resources just through uh, some freemiums, through technology, uh, I think you were the one to tell me about Trello like six years ago. And um, I use that platform to um, store a lot of my governing documents. It's free, it's, uh, it's password protected. And, um, but yeah, you know, what's interesting is during the COVID, um, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are now being forced to use technology, you know, Zooming for board meetings, um, storing documents online. I mean, if you're not already there, you're, you're behind, right? I think sure. this. I think this pandemic is going to force people to uh, work uh, more efficiently with technology, or or not. Right? This, they're they're going to have a harder time. Yeah. Are you finding that most of your boards or associations are pretty pretty open to our new normal and you know new ways of doing things? Are you having Zoom meetings and? We are having Zoom meetings, and of course, the early adopters are going to have a lot more fluidity using the technology. Um, I think a lot of people have iPhones and they underutilize them. But you know, like my, my iPhone, I mean, I'm not, it's not a commercial iPhone, maybe they should sponsor me, but I literally <laughs> run my company through my, my cell phone. Um, I have access to all the documents I need now. I think when earlier in my career, I would follow uh, the president of uh, Touchstone around Jim Merrill. I'd 
go with him from meeting to meeting and he'd have this thick binder of like bylaws and house rules and declarations I remember those days. right and, and he's yeah. tugging this thing along and then nowadays like this it's been replaced with this right yep. and and um so <clears throat> so i built the company with that in mind so now that like during covid i, I have access to documents i don't need to be physically on site to, to you know to have access to information and i think that's very important especially now yeah, yeah. No, I remember those huge workbooks. I think they were like about this thick, big mm -hmm. blue and had all the minutes and all your documents and the financials, the financials and everything. Mm -hmm. And we used to have this big wheeled briefcase <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that we traveled, traveled with. And so you know, we've come a long way and things are getting faster and smaller and more efficient. And, 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 and you know, us being um, a site management company, I was like, how are we going to, you know, be different? And we have to standardize all of our buildings, right? Standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if one site manager is replaced or is, is sick and they, they get um, they get coverage, you need some sort of standards and guidelines to follow, right? Oh, well, what does the maintenance guy do on Wednesday through Saturday, <clears throat> right? If, if this guy is out, the next guy should be able to come in and follow his procedures and do them, right? Um, and we've, it took a long time, but we, we finally started, um, we had to build the system to use the system, right? So if you, if you just take a new building in, and you don't have the system in place, you have to build it, right? Like if you had like a 10 unit leak and there's a brand new building, you don't have every, everybody's phone numbers, right? So you have to like, you know, I, I have to get have contact. To build with, it. You have to build it out, then, then you utilize it. So, oh, the, there's a leak. Okay, well, the SOP is to contact owners A, B, and C in these units. Well, we don't have their numbers, right? So right. too bad for you. You gotta, you gotta come in and like start you got to build that system out to use it more. Um, and and, and again, of, if, if there's leaks now, I don't have to go knock on the door and see who's right. there. I'll just call, <laughs> hey, Mr. Here's your, Mr. Yamamoto, can, can we come and inspect your unit? Are you home? And this, you can do so much with technology, text messaging, emails, you know, and so anyways. Yeah, I think when I met you, you and I used to go out to lunch and talk about the future and talk about technology, remember? We did. We would often, but you know, it's a lot of work up front, you know, otherwise it's garbage in, garbage out, but in the long run, it's, it's worth it, especially with, when you can even um, automate the input, you know, taking spreadsheets, if you will, and uploading into a program or software opposed to manually inputting everything. So, and the future is where AI can actually read documents. I've seen some companies do that where they have automation that kind of scans your documents and, you know, and kind of extrapolates all the important information that, you know, a manager would need. Of right. course, right now, um, AI, you know, you have to have the quality control. You still need folks to kind of look over that to make sure the checks and balances are there, but Mm -hmm. I mean, the future is now. We're getting there, and at at a rapid speed. But you, being a tech guy, you know this is right up your alley. Yeah, and and you know I've I've had the privilege to work for three different management companies, and I know I can tell you for one that there's one company that has endless resources. You know, the largest in the world, which is Asosha, and they had the best technology. They had everything. They had C three. They had um. They had like the latest in like Adobe Acrobat, you know what I mean? So if you needed to like e-sign documents, you could, you could print, you know, you can save as a lot easier. And, um, but nowadays there's a lot of, again, there's freemiums out there um, where you can uh, use the keyword searching for like OCR text reading. Um, oh reading, yeah. Reading through like pages and pages of governing documents and bylaws is makes your eyes bleed. And uh, again, using, using keyword technology is, is, is huge because um, just before we went on air, right, he was asking us for keywords and because you know, we, there's an audience out there that would find this interesting and we want to hashtag it and keyword it so they can find yep. it and make, maybe this is useful, right? Yeah, yeah, well, that's definitely what we want to do, continue to provide information and to continue to 
look for ways to help the audience um, innovate. Uh, you and I also have in common that we're entrepreneurs at heart. And I know that during this time, a lot of folks are looking to come up with creative ways to move forward and, and innovate and ideas are coming to the surface. And, and you know, now's the time to use this extra time per se, although not everyone has a lot of extra time because we're working from home. But I find that a lot of folks are having a lot of creative ideas that are helpful during this time. You being one of them, I know that you have another project that you're working on that I'm excited about. And, you know, I want to give you the, the uh, some time here to kind of um, share that idea with the audience and let them know, you know, what kind of exciting things you're working on. <clears throat> Um, so sorry if there's a uh, noise in the background, we're doing construction, but <clears throat> they're doing a really good job, but you might hear some banging in the back. Um, yeah. okay. but no, thanks. I've, um, you know, I, I, I did get my MBA in 2017 at UH Manoa and okay. I've, I've, I've been surrounded by some of the most brilliant young leaders, um, in Hawaii. Um, a lot of my friends are CFOs in the hotel industry. I mean, they, they told me back in earlier this year, hey man, we're going to lay off 50% of our staff. And yeah, they're hit that's, hard. It's, it's hit hard, right? Yeah. Um, I've had a, I've had a lot of restaurant friends just close down the restaurants during this time. And I think right now, you know, I've, I, I listen to Mark Cuban a lot about how companies have to be, you know, innovative and compassionate during this time. Um, if your, if your website isn't geared for you to accept online payment and transactions, you're already behind the curve. So hire a web designer, pay the money, it's worth it, right? Because you gotta get your product in the customer's hands without, as, as, as easy as possible, right? Like seamless. Fast, yeah. Um, but no, the innovation for us, uh, we, we are a site management company offering different types of services um, for maintenance and site management. So, you know, I have a background in medical. I was a hospital corpsman and a licensed uh, emergency medical technician when I was in the USS Navy, uh, US Navy, USS Navy, US Navy. I was a hospital corpsman uh, for many years. I don't think I knew that about you. I'm full of surprises. <laughs> yeah. But um, we always had to be ready uh, with our medical supplies, um, the Marines and sailors we took care of. We always needed to have PPE, so um, I have some. Oh, back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it, for me, you know, during when this all came about earlier this year, I, I called a friend, very good business guy in uh, Vietnam, Min Lee. Shout out to him. Uh, he used oh. to play uh, professional tennis. Before that, he played for UC Berkeley tennis, and then he stayed in Asia, made a lot of connections, and um, has some. Uh, we have some factory partners that are mass producing these antibacterial masks. They're oh, not wow. Grade. They're not medical grade. Um, they're not. And, they're not medical grade. They're not N95s, but yes. only, only, really, the only like construction guys and doctors and nurses need N95s. Okay. If, you, if you're not in the industry and you're wearing N95s, then you're protected, but it's a little excessive. Yeah. I think. Let's, should, let, yeah. let's get into that in a moment, right after the break. I, I, right, right. Thing yeah, so it's oh, a good place to take a break. So let's take a break, pick up right there where you left off, okay? Sounds good. All right, we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Christine Linders, a physical therapy specialist and the host of Movement Matters. My show is designed to teach you the simplest and most effective treatment strategies to get you out of pain and back to doing what you love. If you or someone you know is having pain in a certain area of the body, I would like a free assessment in treatment over media or in person, and then come on the show to talk about it. Email us at thinktechmovementmatters at gmail.com. Or if you have a topic you would like to know more about, please email us. My goal is to decrease pain all over the world, inspiring people to take better care of their bodies to enjoy life to the fullest. I look forward to hearing from you.
Welcome back. And thank you for joining us. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Mono Wen with NK Management. He is a, the CEO and serial entrepreneur. And before we went to break, and he was telling us about a wonderful, um, innovative idea that he's, you know, uh, taking on. And why don't I let you continue telling that story? Hey, Cheryl. Um, thanks for having me again. And um, thanks for all that you do to have this show going. Um, yeah, we were talking about innovation and um, I, was, I was discussing my, uh, my medical background um, in the military and just, just being, you know, prepared for dis either disasters. And again, this disaster happens to be this pandemic, right? So the, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, uh, mass, you know, Vietnam is a very advanced mass culture because it's the, the air quality is not that great anyways. Mm. Um, so my friends over there were like, look, the factories were going to shut down uh, a friend of a friend's factories, like 1500 employees. They immediately became a mask producing factory overnight and um, they became essential. Now they can't even keep up with the global demand around the world. With the local demand. The, the local and the global, global demand. Okay. Right? So um, just partnering with my, my friend, Men, um, he's, he's moved over a million masks to Japan. We've, uh, we've moved a lot to the U.S., to nonprofit organizations, veteran organizations, different hotels here in Hawaii, and we've been customizing it with their company logos. Um, and that's mm -hmm. been, uh, that's been uh, a, a new venture. I never thought I would be selling product, but that's what we're doing. And, uh, you know, um, uh, there's, there's short-term gains, of course, financially, but um, primarily I wanted to make sure that our team was uh, prepared. We had proper PPE, my family, my church, you know, we've been donating a lot to first responders, HPD and nurses. Um, and, um, nice. I always say it, if, if, you, if you guys need masks and you're on the front lines, call me. I'll gladly donate it. We'll have to make sure that, you know, we let the viewership know exactly where they can can find your mask. And I think that's great that you're doing promotional masks because even on, you know, different properties, you know, often you'll see the staff, they have like custom or promotional shirts, right? Mm -hmm. And so why not coordinate with the PPs or the mm -hmm. mask, if you will, so that they're easily identified on the property? Well, I think you follow, um, you know, what, what the CDC is saying. It looks like we're going to be in the social distancing new norm society for a year until like a vaccine comes out. Well, if, if we more. are, if, if we are, whether, whether people are afraid or not afraid, like, right, the, the powers that be are going to put the standards so they're not held liable. We're going to be wearing masks. And then I think a, a, a lot of the major brands are going to want to exercise corporate responsibility. And we, we could be right here, you know, with, with that opportunity. So um, we have the ability to move millions of masks at a time from Vietnam. At a, and they're, they're really high, it's really high quality fabric. So right now we're working with a couple of doctors. I can't uh, say too much, but there's a few hospitals and they're trying to get us into the VA. But fingers crossed, I mean, again, at the, same, at the end of the day, we're helping people and we have the ability to, to do it right now. And I think because we're all gridlocked with travel quarantines and travel bans. Um, all the top investors in the world right now don't know about Vietnam. Maybe they will after this video comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, and you know, I have my own ideas, right? <laughs> right. So we'll be talking about that. Yeah, I, I was excited. I, I contacted uh, Jeff Dickinson over at uh, Hawaiian Properties. Their shipment oh, yeah, was about to come yeah. in. They they uh, they ordered um, a lot with their own company logo. Um, nice. Al Guzman uh, from Kolani, he ordered a bunch. But a couple of ho hotels that I know, um, they want to be ready because as the economy slow ro rolls and everybody starts getting back, right? We want to be safe. Yeah. Well, then, then be re ready. So um, hotel managers that you guys need to happy be for employees, please reach out to me because it takes about a month turnaround time because they're, they're producing masks for, the, for everybody else. Wow. And I think another um, key element in that that is attractive because like you said, so many vendors or companies may or may not 
produce mass, but when there is a uh, community, when you're involved in the community in terms of uh, donating masks to hospitals and things like that, it brings added value. And I find that, you know, people, including myself, like to support those kind of causes. So when you know that you're involved with an organization that's also giving back and paying it forward, you're, you know, that's kind of another incentive to just, you know, kind of go ahead and, you know, support that company. And you, yeah. have, you have a background for all of that. I mean, your story is intriguing and your story is one that you can be proud of because you've certainly given back. And... Um, so it's the world's opportunity to come. Thanks, forward. thanks, Cheryl. No, I mean my, you know my my wife got a, I got a call from uh, uh, some of our, our, our friends from Legal Aid and um, <clears throat> the foster the foster youth of Hawaii wanted to raise money t for the uh, foster kids, Aww. and um, we 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 worked at a deal to um, sell it to them at cost, and that 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 just happened, and that's that's just my wife's, you know. Um, professional uh, connections here just again man if we can help right now it's it's a time to help right because like social media is just um saturated with death and all these numbers and what the president's doing whether it's not like look I, I i was like look I'm, I'm not gonna get into all that i mean i can i can get worked up over it or i can figure out and do make my own okay, contributions yeah. however however way we can right so Right. These are, these are what we do. We we do have control over these things. So, yeah, just doing what we can. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need to share your contact information or your website. And things yeah. Like um. I'll give it to you, and if you guys want to put the link for the mass in there, or my, yeah, definitely. www. nk management. dot <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sounds. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, so yeah, you're pretty busy these days and uh, happy to hear it and happy to kind of share some of the, some of your insight in the industry, you know, with the viewership and some of the things that you're seeing and changes that you have to make and, and you know, and supporting the community and, you know, keeping your business strong and the community safe and the properties that you manage. That's a lot. You're, you're, yeah, you have a lot uh, on your plate. <laughs> you, you think so? <laughs> um, you know, we're we're all given twenty four hours, and uh, I want to I want to make it count because we gotta make time for our families, right? Um, I, I I'll uh, <clears throat> how much time do we have left? Um, I think about we have a little time, maybe about five minutes or so. Oh no, um, okay. I'll uh this is this would kind of be part of our wrap up like um when i was in grad school i i was friends i was in a group i was in a group with this guy named tice he was a farmer and he was the most sought after farmer in the netherlands he had like developed some really sophisticated like um aquaponics um or hydroponics in the netherlands right he got recruited by monsanto anyways long story short we we had all these projects in grad school and I came up with the most excuses because, like, hey, man, I got a business. I got a family. You know, I can't get to this project. And he called me out. He's like, hey, man, we all got families. We all work, you know. And he turned his Google calendar around and showed me. He said, look, man, I have – I work here. I do I, – I, I put homework here. I have family time here. I study here. He's like, if you're not taking it seriously, if you don't use your calendar, maximize your day, you, you're going you're gonna to fall behind, right? And so – uh, I, I really started like just filling up my calendar as, as my own like assistant, you know, and, and that's, uh, <laughs> th those are, those are some of the things that's helped me as an entrepreneur just stay organized just use my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. No, it helps a lot. It helps a lot because you, you find that you need in order to accomplish anything, you just need to block out time and yeah. stay organized and keep that calendar filled yeah, and but even block out time, you know, to, Take care of yourself. I'm gonna send you a book. Um, it's called a uh, double your double your double your profits. You'll realize you left I, a lot on the I table. I like the title, so I will appreciate that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna send you that book because it was recommended to me by a friend, and uh, it's it's helped me out the mindset over the last year. So I'll send you I'll send it to you. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I just heard the little ping. So I think this is a good place to wrap up. Thank you and so much for having me. Of course, of course. I want to thank you for joining in and kind of sharing with us what's going on in your world and how you're giving back and, you know, paying it forward and, and changing the industry. And, you know, I'm always proud of you. I'm proud of you. Let's, uh, let's get together soon. Okay. Let's do it. All right. All so right. thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Uh, please tune in every Thursday for um, co the Condo Insider Show at 3 o'clock. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Mana.